I want you to imagine a time long, long ago, so long ago that we cannot say for certain when. In this ancient time, people began to move from one land to another. These prehistoric people were nomadic hunters who traveled in groups. These prehistoric people began to move from the land we call Asia into the land we call North America. They did not plan to move from one land to another. They were simply following the herds of animals that they hunted for their own survival. It is thought that various groups of people ventured on foot across a vast cold area between Asia and North America called Beringia, following herds of prehistoric animals. Historians think that, of, that the very beginning of this migration of ancient people, ancient Asian people, began during the last major ice age. It was during the ice age that large areas of the Earth's waters were frozen. At this time, northern regions of North America were covered in thick sheets of ice and giant glistening glaciers. As you heard earlier, because water had turned to ice, during the Ice Age, sea levels had dropped and certain areas of land had become uncovered. Beringia was one of these areas. As these prehistoric people moved across Beringia, they lived and hunted in this icy world. There, they followed and hunted great herds of large mammals, such as woolly mammoths, mastodons, great bison or buffalo, saber-toothed cats, and giant ground sloths. These large mammals are known as big game. All these animals were prey for people who migrated or moved from Asia to North America. This is almost certainly not the only way that people arrived in North America. It is also likely that people came to North America in boats, following the coastline in search of land and food, and then stayed because they discovered an abundance of new resources. This migration of people and animals did not happen all at once, nor did these people come only from one place. People moved across Asia into North America over a period of time. However they arrived, these are believed to be the very first people to inhabit North America. Eventually, as the climate began to warm and the ice-covered land began to thaw, it became possible to travel even farther into North America. Giant glaciers that had blocked native people's path had melted. People moved south through an area that opened up between two enormous glaciers. Scientists call this path between these glaciers the ice-free corridor. This corridor or passage was cold and wet, but habitable. And so large numbers of native peoples continued to migrate or move in small groups just as before. They lived a nomadic life as they followed the herds of animals that they preyed upon. In order to survive in this way, these native peoples had to be expert hunters. Although we do not know much about this period of human history, archeologists have discovered a variety of spears, including leaf-shaped spears embedded in mammoth bones. In addition to the tools for scraping and carving bone, it, is, it also seems that prehistoric hunters used a spear thrower. This device was a short rod with a hook on the end. It, in, um, it enabled the hunters to throw a spear or dart with a great deal more accuracy and power. It is also believed that these early Native Americans learned how to domesticate dogs so that they could use them to hunt and travel. We can only imagine what life must have been like for these people as they en endeavored to survive in an icy cold world by hunting creatures such as the nine foot tall woolly mammoth with nothing more than a spear and, and stealth or slyness. They would have hunted 
in groups to take down their prey. A woolly mammoth would have provided many pounds of meat, as well as fur, tusk, and bones. A band of hunters and their families would most likely have stayed with the carcass or dead body of the animal until the food supply ran out. In addition to food, the animals they hunted provided these native peoples with clothes. Archaeologists have discovered artifacts that, uh, and other evidence that tell us that animal hides were stretched out to dry and afterwards they were sewn together using simple tools made of rock or bone to provide either clothing or a form of shelter. As the Earth's climate changed and it became warmer, the way these peoples lived changed too. Gradually, many prehistoric animals that had been hunted for meat, fur, and bones disappeared from our world forever. Were they hunted to extinction by people struggling to survive in a changing world? Or did climate change alter the delicate balance of the food chain to such an extent that these mammoths could no longer find foods they needed to live? We will never know for certain the answer to these questions. We do know that the saber-toothed tiger and the woolly mammoth no longer wander this land, whereas other ancient creatures such as the buffalo did survive. It does appear that some animals were more able to adapt to climate change than others. The buffalo, for example, is thought to have become smaller and swifter over time. Once the ice was gone, new plants, grasses, and trees emerged, and various animals adapted to a new diet. Native peoples adapted too. They found other smaller prey to hunt, such as deer and rabbits, as well as new varieties of fruits, nuts, and seeds to gather and consume or eat. These prehistoric people looked even more to the oceans, lakes, and rivers for sustenance and means of transportation. And so eventually, over many years, people moved right across this vast expanse of land to various regions, to the wide open grasslands of the Central Plains, to the northeastern and southern eastern woodlands, swamplands, and coastal regions, and to the sun-drenched west coast and dry southwestern deserts. Some people settled in the far north regions of the Arctic and the subarctic. Some people moved even farther south into what we now call the continent of South America. Eventually, many ancient peoples chose to no longer live nomadic lives, but instead chose to settle in one place and establish a permanent or semi-permanent settlement. They may have decided this because they discovered regions where the food supplies were plentiful in the form of animals to hunt and fish to catch and plants to consume. In addition, there were natural resources such as fresh water to drink and wood or other materials that could be used to construct homes and build cooking fires. The temperature in some regions may also have been temporarily mild. And one thing that is certain is many people began to farm though they had previously survived by foraging or looking for wild plants in addition to hunting prey or large animals, native peoples began experimenting with plants and harvesting, and they eventually began to grow a variety of crops. Because of this, some people chose to stay in one place and by their collective efforts increase their own food supply. Over time, approximately 500 North American native tribes began, er, came to inhabit a wide variety of regions across North America. These native people whose total population peaked or reached its highest number at about 20 million would, there, would live there in accordance to their own customs and cultures for thousands and thousands of years until European culture brought extreme changes to their way of life.